everybody thank you for joining me again so today we're going to be thinking a bit about wildlife gardening now in the uk gardens are a really important habitat so they cover the same area as the lake district exmoor dartmoor and the norfolk boards combined um, so as well as joining your local wildlife trust um, making your garden wildlife friendly is one of the best things you can do to help it um, so today we're going to think about the story of a wildlife garden and how it develops and changes so i've got a blank garden here we're going to start from scratch and hopefully by the end we'll have made a home for all of these creatures you can see along the front here okay so if you've got a blank garden like this perhaps the first thing you might want to do is um put a fence around it which is fine so i've got some fences here um but you might notice that in these fences there's a bit of a gap at the bottom now the reason for that is if you're making a wildlife garden you need the wildlife to be able to get in and out um, and particularly things like hedgehogs. So I don't have a cuddly toy of a hedgehog unfortunately, I don't know why that is. Um, so I've just got this little wooden guy. Um, so hedgehogs can travel over two kilometres every night looking for food and possibly a mate as well, um, which means that they're going to travel and visit a lot of different gardens. Now every time they try to visit a garden they have to go around the edge because there's no gap in the wall or the fence for them to get in. So that means they're going to have to cross more roads and they're more likely to get run over. Um, so for hedgehogs it's really important that we connect all of our gardens together by leaving little gaps in the hedge or in the fence or the wall so they can get under and into the garden. Okay so the first thing you need to remember is to make sure wildlife can get in. Um, okay so we've done that. Now if we just leave a patch of bare earth like this and gardeners will know that it doesn't take very long for plants to start to germinate. So initially you might get things like grass starting to grow, long grass like this. And you might also start to get some of these. So these are stinging nettles. Um, so I'll put a few of those in as well. Now many would class these as weeds. But they're actually really really important and a really good habitat for lots of wildlife so long damp grass is going to start attracting things like these guys so snails put him in there and also slugs so i'll put a couple of slugs in as well <coughs> and things like nettles are really good for butterflies and also ladybirds so let's get our ladybird here so ladybirds lay their eggs on sting nettles and when the eggs hatch, they hatch out into these weird little guys, these little larvae. And these are really ferocious predators and they really like to feed on aphids. So they're fantastic to have in your garden. So leaving a patch of nettles somewhere sunny is a really, really good way to encourage these little helpers. So I'll put him in there. There's also a lot of species of butterfly that lay their eggs on, on um, nettles. Um, so they're really important for caterpillars as well. So it's really, really good if you can to leave a patch of nettles somewhere sunny in your garden. So I'll put a little caterpillar in there too. Okay, so already we've got some wildlife in our garden and we haven't really done anything yet, so that's great. Okay, so if we leave it a bit longer, some of these weeds will probably start to flower. So I'll put some few flowers in there. And one of the first weeds that will flower is probably a dandelion. So I'll put those in there. And I don't quite look like dandelions, but they'll do for today. Okay. Now, often people are tempted to try and get rid of dandelions. Oh, they're a weed, they come in from my patio. Um, and they might spray them with herbicides. But it's really important that you don't, particularly at this time of year, <coughs> because dandelions can be a really important nectar source for these little guys. So early bumblebees, when they come out of hibernation, are desperately looking for nectar sources, and often dandelions are the only ones that they can find. So if we get rid of the dandelions, our bumblebees have nothing to eat. So if you can leave the dandelions in your garden, it's really good to do that. So let's put our little bee in there. So already we've got lots of insects, lots of slugs and snails, which means we might start to get some of the creatures that like to feed on them. So we might get a blackbird coming down to feed on our slugs and snails and insects. We can pop him on the garden there. We might get a frog, because they like nice damp grass, because obviously they need to stay damp because they're amphibians. They like to feed on small slugs. Um, so we'll pop him in as well. And we might also start to get of these guys so our hedgehog now we can get him through the fence he's going to come and feast on all of those lovely slugs and snails that's their favorite so we'll put him in as well fantastic so we've got a few flowers and a few insects coming down to those flowers but if we put more flowers in we're going to get more and more insects so let's plant some more flowers in our garden some white ones there perhaps there are daisies 
some nice red ones down here. Now, when you're planting flowers in your garden, it's really good if you can have as many different types as possible. So different insects will prefer different colours and different shapes and they'll feed differently. So the bigger variety you have, the better. Um, also, a lot of flowers have been bred to look to us more pretty, which means some of them are double flowers, which makes it really hard to see the centre. Now for pollinators, that's a problem because if they can't get to the nectar in the middle, the, value, the flowers are of no value to them. So if you can try and stick to traditional flowers with big open centres, um, that's definitely better for pollinators. So I'll put some more in. We've got some buddleia here, some, and perhaps some lavender, tuck that in there. Lovely colours. And the butterflies are going to really love those, so let's put our butterfly in here. Feeding on that nice nectar. Another flower that's fantastic for wildlife are sunflowers. So as well as having um, lots of pollen nectar for the pollinators to come when they're flowering, when they finish flowering, if you've ever looked at a sunflower, you'll know there's hundreds of seeds in the middle. And if you feed the birds, you'll know that you get sunflower seeds. They're one of the birds' favourites. Um, so if you have these in your garden and you leave them for the autumn, the birds will come down. So after the insects are finished, the birds will come and eat the centres. So they're fantastic all-rounders for lots of different types of wildlife. And in fact, I'm going to put our little bluter in here to show that we might get some birds coming down to feed on those sunflowers. Okay, wow, so our garden's already starting to take shape. So what else can we put in? So these creatures have got something to eat and some of them have got somewhere to hide. But the other thing that animals really need is somewhere to drink. So we're going to put a pond in our garden. And a lot of people say that putting a pond in your garden is the best way to encourage wildlife. So we'll pop that in there. Now with your pond, it's really important that animals that come down to drink or possibly bathe or go in through and lay their eggs, they don't drown, okay? So if we've got a steep-sided smooth pond like this and our little frog comes along and can't get out, that's not very good. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a bit of a ladder and we're going to put some stones in there so that you can easily jump out. And also the hedgehogs should fall in, that means they'll be able to climb out as well. Now also in your pond, it's a really good idea to have some plants. So if we get aquatic insects like um, dragonflies and damselflies, they'll be able to climb out on these when they're ready to emerge from the water. But also they'll put oxygen into the water as well, so oxygenating plants are really important. So let's put a couple of plants in, I think. Now our frog is, uh, seems to have made himself at home down there. And if he's really happy, he might find a mate and lay some of this, or she might lay some of this. So you might get some frog spawn in your pond as well, which would be fantastic. You might also start to attract some of these guys. So these are newts. So they're amphibians, just like the frog. They need some water to lay their eggs in, um, but the rest of the time they like somewhere damp to hide. So let's, let's pop them down there by our pond as well. Okay, so what next? Well, we know we need somewhere damp to hide. Um, and if you've had your garden for a little while, you might have cut the grass, you might have some um, dead leaves lying around. So let's make a compost heap using those. So here's some dead leaves. And a bit of moss there to show you grass cuttings. So let's make a compost heap. Maybe there's some dead twigs in there as well. Now compost heaps, absolutely fantastic for wildlife. So lots of little insects and invertebrates will call the compost heap home. So I've got a little spider there. You might also get lots of these guys, worms, as well as wood lice and millipedes and centipedes and all sorts of things. Let's put them down there. And because compost heaps get warm when they break down, um, other things really like to use them as well, like our grass snake here. So grass snakes, they lay their eggs in compost heaps. They need somewhere sunny to bask um, and they actually spend a lot of time hunting frogs near water. So if you've got a pond, you've got frogs, you've got a compost heap, you've got a really good habitat for grass snakes potentially. So let's pop him in there. We've also now got lots of food and shelter, perhaps for this little guy. So little mice and voles um, might start to come into your garden and they particularly love compost heaps because there's lots of insects for them to eat, there's lots of places for them to hide and make their burrows and there's lots of places yeah, for them to shelter. So let's put our little mouse down by the compost heap. And also, our little friendly garden robin, he'll really appreciate the worms in the compost heap. They like scratching around in there, particularly if you've been digging it over. Um, and he might come down for a drink in our pond as well. So let's pop him down here. Well, 
lots of wildlife in our garden already. Um, okay. So something else I'm going to do is I'm going to make a habitat pile. So this is a pile of logs or um, old twigs or brambles, whatever you've got that you might have cut down. And these can also be really good places for animals to hide and shelter and perhaps even breed. Let's put some log piles in here. So these are the sorts of places that our newts are going to hibernate in the winter. So they might go under those logs. So that's fantastic. They're also the sorts of places where a hedgehog, if they're happy and they've got somewhere to drink and lots to eat, you might end up, if they can build their nest under this log pile, with some of these little hoglets. So you might get some baby hedgehogs in your garden if you're lucky. So let's pop some of those in there. What you might also get if you've got lots of insects and also lots of moths, is some of these guys. So bats might come through your garden at night feasting on those moths and insects. And these are really cool creatures to have in your garden. Let's just pop him on the side. He's a bit big for our garden, um, so we'll just pop him over there. Okay, wow. So now we've got loads and loads of wildlife. So now you've got all these creatures, you might start to get some slightly bigger predators. So you might start to get some owls coming through, maybe looking to feed on the little mice and perhaps on the frogs as well. Um, it'd be nice for him to have somewhere to sit actually in the daytime. So let's put a tree in the garden. And also it'd be nice if our birds had somewhere to roost and nest. So let's put some little shrubs at the back there as well for them. They're happy. Okay, you might, if you're really lucky, even get some bigger animals coming in. So maybe a fox might come and drink from your pond or maybe hunt some of the mice and possibly even a badger. So let's put these having a drink around our pond. Okay, well. So without a huge amount of effort, we now have a garden that's full of wildlife. Um, so hopefully that's given you some ideas for things you can do at home. Um, I'll, give a I'll upload a worksheet for this um, activity. So if you've got little ones, um, there's like, some activities you can do. Perhaps you can go out in your garden and see what you're already doing for wildlife to help it. Um, and also um, maybe think about how you might be able to make it even better. Um, so yeah, lots and lots to, uh, to think about there. Um, just a few other things you might want to do in your garden to help wildlife. You might want to feed the wildlife, so lots of people feed the birds. That's a fantastic way to get a close-up view of them. Um, you might put nest boxes up as well to provide extra places for them to nest. Um, and you might also put food out for things like hedgehogs, um, particularly at this time of year when they're starting to emerge from hibernation. Um, so things like wet cat food are the best thing to feed hedgehogs if you can't get hold of actual hedgehog food. Um, please don't put bread and milk out because they are lactose intolerant and bread is not very good for them at all. It doesn't have very much nutritional value. Um, so yeah, wet cat food is best for hedgehogs. Okay, so hope that's given you lots of ideas. Hope you've enjoyed that video and I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.